Hello everyone, welcome in Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah with a little bit more crochet from the beginning. And today all you're going to see is some pink yarn. Ha ha ha, for those of you who hate pink, I'm so sorry, not sorry. It's easy to see and it's a four weight. By the way, this is a mainstay 100% acrylic yarn. Um, this is a huge ball. I got this at Walmart some time ago. Don't remember how much it was, but it wasn't much. And it recommends a 5.5 millimeter hook. However, I'm a rebel, so today I'm using a six. This is just one of my El Cheapo hooks that I've had forever. And by forever, I mean like a year because I've only been crocheting for a year. And yeah, it's similar, but not the same as a Clover Amour that's sort of the same flavor we get there. Now what we've done before on crochet from the beginning, we have covered chains, okay? We have covered single crochet. And what I have done with these is I have done 20 chains and then three rows of the other stitch. So this is three rows of single crochet. You can see from the front and back. There you go. And we've also done half double crochet. By the way, that is my favorite. Out of all the basic stitches to do, I really just like doing half doubles. Don't know why. But there you go. We have done three half doubles, and you can see the size differences there. And we have done doubles. Ta-da! Double crochet. You can see how much taller that is, and it also seems to stretch out the fabric, because each of these were done. Now this one I was crocheting a little bit tight, a little stressed out. But um, yeah, these were done with the same hook the same yarn, and on the same day. Put those aside for the moment. Yeah, let's put them over here. But for right now, we are going to work on a triple crochet. And by the way, all the terms that I've been using are American terms, not English terms. Um, in English terms, everything is different, and you always have to translate. A triple crochet in American terms is a, I think it's a triple double or something. I could not have to go look that up, but I'm gonna attempt to count to 20. <laughs> no guarantees. By the way, you should see the setup that I have of doing this right now. I'm standing with a tripod right in front of me and yeah, I'm not used to crocheting while standing. I know, I hold my yarn weird, I hold my hook weird. I just do things very strangely, but you know what? With crochet, you often hear people say, well, some people say, oh, that's the wrong way to hold your yarn. That's the wrong way to hold your hook. That's the wrong way to, no. Dude, listen here. You can do it however it works for you. Boy, this is kind of a tight chain. It's probably gonna curl a little bit. And I have no idea how many I've done. How do you count a chain? Well, you never count the one that's on your hook. That's just holding there waiting for you to do more. You count your little pretty V's, or you can flip it to the back and count those little bumps. I've heard them called camel bumps, but it is the back bump of the stitch. Depending on my mood, I'll do one or the other. Today I'm gonna count the back bumps. Okay. One, two, I actually had 20. Wow. Okay. And I wasn't even counting. Alrighty then. The wonders never cease. Okay. Now, I do things a little less orthodox than some people do. And again, that's okay. For this 20, you've, you've ended like this when you're doing your chaining. Okay. The first row for me is always the hardest when doing a stitch. First of all, I'm going to chain one and normally we turn our work. I'm gonna flip my work over because I wanna see those back bumps. Now the one I just chained, we want to skip. And what we're going to be working into is this first stitch right there. For a triple crochet, you yarn over twice. And boy, that's hard to drill into your head if you have to do a bunch of them. Yarn over twice. Don't skip it. Do it now. You'll work. Yeah, I crocheted my chain a little bit tight, but that's okay. 
you go in, you pull up a loop, okay, that leaves you with four on your hook, you yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through the last two. I'm guessing that's why that's called a triple, because you have to do things three times. And something that I like to do is on that first stitch, sometimes when you come back, it's like, which one was the first stitch? I don't remember now. I've slept since then. I, I got up and got a beverage. I, you know, I put a stitch marker in that very first one. Oh, by the way, Dollar Tree. Yeah, that's pink too. <laughs> Just a coincidence on that one. Okay. Yarn over twice. I almost forgot to do it. See that? It is easy to forget. But the reason I like to go into the back bump on these is it leaves a prettier stitch on the end, which for something like this really makes no never mind either way. Ooh, standing. Never any fun. Okay. Gonna go into the next back bump. Just wiggle it if you can't get it in there. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the final two. You see how tall that stitch is? Yeah, it is. You'd want to use this on something that you want full coverage on because bloop, there you go. But it is great for something where you just want to make a lot of time or make a lot of, you know, get a lot of space at a quick time. As long as you remember to yarn over twice, that is always the hardest for me. Okay. And triple crochets can look pretty cool. I just turned around and looked at a throw that my mother made. Gosh. 40 years ago, maybe, for my great-grandmother. And it ended up back in my hands after many, many years. And I adore it. It's done the sort of fall colors. And I have it sitting on the back of the chair that I use in here. See, very tall stitches. Yarn over twice. Did forget to yarn over twice. The phone call's coming from inside the house. Oh, wait. We're not doing a horror story. And it's not a horror story. If you mess up on crochet, you can always pull it out. I mean, really, it's yarn. You can you can frog that sucker as much as you want. I mean, sometimes yarn doesn't like to be frogged, but you know what I mean. It's just yarn. And right now, we are just making a little sample swatch of the stitch. And if you get rhythm going on this, you can really get some speed. Got to make sure I pull some yarn out, though. I'm usually attempting to crochet with interference from a cat. He doesn't chase the strings, though. He just wants to, like, lay on my feet or just be sitting on me when I'm doing anything. I think he's napping somewhere. That's good. That's good. Okay. Now, where would you use this stitch? A lot of patterns call for it if you follow patterns. It looks really cool worked into a neat stitch pattern on um, like shawls and stuff because it is open. It's sort of an open, airy one. Now, I'm doing this in a four weight yarn. Now, this would be super pretty in a really small yarn, just looking all delicate and fancy. Again, you can see, you're going, gosh, is that all there is to it? Yeah. It's just a matter of remember to yarn over twice. And my first row is always the hardest because getting into those bumps, especially if I did my chain too tight, shame on me. I should know better. I do know better. I've been doing this a year. I know a little bit better that I make my first chain too tight. But I was doing it standing up while filming. Hello. McFly. Not the best idea. But you know what? Make it work. Oh, there, there was that splitted one. Okay. Ah, like I said, if you gotta frog it, frog it. It's okay. 
and see exactly what I did there. And first, I'm going to try and yeah, if at first you don't succeed, you know, fiddle with it. <laughs> It'll work eventually. I'm going to pause so that you don't have to see me go all the way to the end because I decided to do a 20 chain swatch instead of a 10 or something. But uh, I'll meet you back at the end and show you what I do. Okay, I have unpaused now that I've got just about to the end. Also, I wanted to sit down because that's a thing. Still remembering to yarn over twice. I'm so proud of myself. I always tell people who are just beginning, now I'm still a noob to crochet. I've been crocheting, you know, just over a year. There are people on this platform who've been crocheting for 40 or 50 years. And they'll even tell you, there's always more to learn. You can always learn something from somebody. And I know there's a million different tutorials out there, but maybe this will connect with somebody. now. Yes, it's curving. And the reason it's curving is my beginning chain was done kind of tight. And that's something I'm guilty of a lot. A lot of times if it's something that I know, like I'm doing a big blanket or something, um, and I have to chain a blue billion of them to get where I want to go, I will actually chain with a size up hook and then go to the size I'm going to use in the first place. Because this happens to me, because apparently, you know, I'm flawed. Okay, just kidding. We're all flawed, but you know. All right, we've gotten to the end. We have 20 of our pretty triple crochets. Now, I'm going to chain one. That does not count as anything. I'm going to turn my work. Then I'm going to yarn over twice, pull it up nice and tall, and you see that very first stitch? That's what we're going into because that first chain didn't mean anything. Now in a lot of patterns you'll see chain three and that will count as your double crochet or your triple crochet. You can do that too. This is just what I do. So I'm making my next triple crochet just like normal. And by normal, I mean my way. <laughs> what is normal, right? I never claimed to be actually normal. And then we scoot on. Notice how the second row is a lot easier. The way you go in See that pretty V on the top? If you turn it to the side, you can see there's an opening right there for your hook. And not only that, something that I learned a long time into trying to do this is that you see this tall post of the stitch. Here, let me get rid of that. Let's pull some yarn up so we have something to point with. This post here goes up to the top of the stitch. And then you have the actual top of the stitch. The front loop, the back loop, just all kinds of niceness. Boy, I really crocheted tight on that one. Good gravy. But am I going to re-record it? No, because the mistakes stay in right here. And I'm going to continue to do this and get the uh, three rows for this just like I did the other, so you can really see the height difference in the stitch. I kind of envy people <clears throat> who can hold their yarn and just kind of flare out their fingers and do their stuff like that. It actually causes me pain in my hands to try to do it that way. So I don't. I just do it this way and I've kind of learned to make my tension all right. The main, the initial chain is where I have my problems. I don't know why I chain so tight. It's just a thing. We all have our quirks, right? Well, I am a walking basket of quirks. And I just got a mental image of that. I wonder what kind of basket I'd be. Like wicker or just one of those Dollar Tree baskets. <laughs> dollar 25 tree now would I be glittery I think I'd have glitter lots of glitter and rainbow colors with a lot of black thrown in because you know I do have that dark side 
you know, kind of basket you'd be. <laughs> Something to contemplate while you're doing triple crochets. Ah, pull out more yarn, Deb. All right, I'm going to get to the end of this and we'll turn and we'll go back. Meet you in a minute. Okay, voila, the magic of YouTube. I've gotten towards the end. And uh, remember how I told you, you got to keep chanting to yourself to yarn over twice? I didn't, and I had a bunch of double crochets, and I had to frog it and redo it. So, yeah, there's that. All right, getting towards the end. Yarn over twice. Don't do what I did. Mm -hmm. Pull through, pull through. Yarn over twice. Remember that stitch marker that we put at the end of that first row where I had just chained one? This is why. Let me unhook that. You can see that stitch is kind of off to the side. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, take that out. And I'm going to go in where that stitch was, right there. Right where that stitch marker was, because that was the first one. And there is a reason I do that. I have found that doing that little short turn makes my sides line up a lot better than doing, like say crocheting three or four and then turning and having that act as a stitch, that gets all wibbly wobbly. This is less wibbly wobbly to me. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna chain one, turn my work, yarn over twice and go into that first stitch. I'm not going to bother with a stitch marker there because this is the last row that I'm doing. But you can see that that first stitch is kind of a weird, tall, wonky one, but it does make the sides straight. It would make it even straighter if I hadn't gone so tight on that first blasted round. Okay. I know, I know. Just keep flogging myself about that, but I even thought about it as I was doing it. I'm like, why did I crochet that so tight? Hmm. All right. But. I want to get to the end of this and show you the difference in height just so you have a visual representation because sometimes you think well oh, single double triple how how different are they really as far as size goes this will help you to be able to sort of you know lock it into your mind if i don't drop all the stitches off my hook hello do you do that too i just totally lose it sometimes and my hook goes one way and my yarn goes another and i'm like wait what happened Happens a lot if I'm crocheting while watching TV. Yeah, we're, we're going to start that one over. What did I just do? Okay, there's two. See, I forgot how to count to two. I forgot how to hold onto my yarn. It's a wild world. All right, I'm going to do the pausey thing again until we get to the end because you don't want to sit here and watch me yarn over twice, pull through, pull through, pull through, over and over and over again for another, you know, however many minutes. Okay, getting to the end. Again, you know, truth be told, I wanted to sit down and crochet in a more comfortable position. Normally, when I'm sitting down crocheting, I have my arms sort of straight down by my sides, but I'm just bent at the elbow and I hold my crochet very close to my body. Right now I'm in sort of an awkward position. So, you know, it is what it is. Crochet in a position that's comfortable for you. It shouldn't hurt. If it hurts, change the way you're doing it or rest if you haven't rested in a while. Okay. And by the way, how I finish this off, um, if I have to tie off, which I'm going to do, yarn over like I'm going to pull through and do something, set down my stuff and find my scissors. Dunk. School supply scissors, they're fantastic. Keeping a project bag. Clip. And I pull that up through and snug it down. There. Now let me clear off some stuff here so that you can see the differences in the height of these stitches. 
because it really is a huge difference. All right, there's the triple. This is the double. Look how much different that is. This is the half double, which is even smaller, and the single, again, all in American terminology. If I put them one on top of the other, you can see how much they grow. But that triple, wow, that really knocks it out of the park, doesn't it? You would think, which going from double to triple, that it wouldn't be that much difference, but it really, really is. And these are all the same number of rows, and that triple is much more open. Now you can, you know, give it a little tug and make the stitches a little taller and tighter. But again, for a garment that you don't want to wear anything under, I wouldn't go there. That's, yeah. That is a wardrobe malfunction waiting to happen. I do like half doubles because it makes a nice solid fabric without being too heavy. And I think that the stitch itself is kind of pretty for just being a really basic stitch. Doubles still have some of that pokey through reaction and singles to me just take too doggone long. Oh my gosh. And but the difference between the single and the half double, you wouldn't think would be much because you're literally doing the same motions. You're just yarning over once in between if you don't know how to do the half double crochet or the single or the double, I do have um, other tutorials in my playlist of crochet from the beginning. And definitely this is from the beginning. I am a beginner and I just wanted to make something that other beginners might be able to find some value in. Um, like, like don't do that <laughs> like I did. See this one turned out nice and straight. I don't know what the difference was that I did. I think I relaxed while making the chain. But anyhow, lots of little pink swatches, little pink swatches for you and me. Oh, sorry, not that song. Um, <laughs> if there's any stitch you would like to see little old me attempt a uh, tutorial at, let me know. I'd be happy to give it a shot. And uh, hopefully you have enjoyed this. I'd love it if you leave a like on your way out. I have lots of different content besides just crochet because it is crochet life and stuff with Deborah. This is part of the crochet part. I will see you very, very soon. Thank you for coming by. Bye now.